Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing an ex intake mod on Dan's NB 1.6 head. The reason we can do that is because it doesn't have the cam angle sensor that a Mark 1 head does, and that means that we can use two exhaust cams, one from the NB and one from the NA, to get more lift and more duration. So what we're doing is putting an NB exhaust cam into the intake side. That means we have to degree the cams. So James is here today to help me work that out. So for now, what we need to do is shim this head up and then time it up so we can start working out exactly where that cam needs to go. In order to shim this head, we've got to take the cams back out again, obviously. Um, what we did notice when we were first putting these cams in, because of the machine work we had done on the valves and the valve seats, the uh, like the buckets were too high. Even no matter what shim we put in there, we just didn't have any space. In order to fix that, we had to take all the cams out. We got some of the smaller shims we can buy, two mil ones, we put them in, and now we've measured them all up, done the maths, figured out what the shims we actually need are to get into spec. So now they've all turned up. We'll have to take the cams back out again, put all the right shims in the right places, put the cams back, check they're correct, and then we can start degreeing all the stuff and figure out where that's got to go. Perfect. All of our fresh shims here. Again, they're aftermarket ones, all the right size. Got my cheat sheet that we worked out before where they all go. So now we've got to put them in. 2.85s, so they go on the intake. They go on the exhaust. 2.85 and 2. 2.85 and 3. 6 and seven. All the shims are in. Quickly lubricate the top of them, pop the cams back on. Should be good to go. Test all the uh, test the clearances. They should be in the middle. That was the plan. If we put that one in at its actual TDC, we'll be wrong. We need to orientate the lobes so that they're close to what the original intake cam would have been so at least we're in the ballpark because right now if you look at that the uh, lobes are almost opposite so what we'll do is we'll pop that down on the side there somewhere near tdc so when i uh, pop the hold this one up i can orientate the lobes to be roughly right and then pop it in and see that we're quite off because now that's approximately where the intake cam would have been we can get rid of this we don't need that anymore now we've got to pop the cam caps back on and torque it down but that's going to look like we probably have to re-drill the cam gear for that now that we've uh, torqued the camshafts down I had to double check that everything is correct. It looks like it will be based on the math. So I'm just going to use the feeler gauges, make sure everything looks like it should be working. It's this one. We know that the, uh, the exhaust cam, we want between 12 and 13 thou on these. So 12 is quite easy. 13 doesn't fit at all. So yeah, the slight drag on 12, it will be exactly between is what we wanted. 12 is slight drag, 13 doesn't fit at all, so that's correct. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, we'll check all of them now, don't need to see all of that, check they're all good, and then we'll get to making this actually work. Just now to throw a timing belt on it so we can degree our cams. Just throwing the timing belt on it, the cam wheels are on as good as we can make them currently because they're adjustable, we've got a bit of leeway. This cam is correct because we're just leaving the exhaust as standard for now because the uh, timings are close enough. For the exhaust cam in the intake side, we've had to have this whole wheel moved a long way off. Um, the eye should be at the top. Right now it's over here because our pin has to be in one of these three holes we've got until we figure out where our true top dead center is. 
So now we've done all that, we've got to put our degree wheel on here, rig up a dial indicator to read the lift on uh, number one cylinder, and then figure out where real top of the centre is and see how close we actually are. Right, we first found true top dead center using a, a piston stopper. We've marked our, uh, put a little stick on top dead center of our degree wheel. And then we're gonna do all of our testing on like lifter one on intake. Just uh, rigged up this bracket contraption for a dial ball gauge. Dial indicator actually, it came from a ball gauge. The rod is on our bucket our target bucket and we're expecting to turn this and if our eyeballing was correct the specs say we should see max lift at 110 degrees 110 crank degrees so if that reads 110 and that's at its max travel we got it right if not we'll have to adjust it until we do get it right and that will be our actual tdc of this can shall we give it a go we just had a false start with the tool binding but we've made an adjustment uh, and now we should be able to find where the cam starts, stops going down and starts coming back up again. I say cam, it's a bucket really. Uh, so let's give it another go. We are literally at, like, it is, the dwell makes it 95 and we wanted 110. Yeah. So we're slightly off. So we just had to double check that measurement and we're now pretty sure that we're 15 degrees off where we wanted. That's uh, all right because cam gears, I think, are seven degrees, seven and a half degrees per tooth. So to prove that, we just marked the, the existing top tooth with a sharpie, moved it to the degrees we wanted, and now the next tooth over is roughly where it was before. So we're going to take the time belt off. We're going to move this whole cam one tooth to the... Uh, one tooth counterclockwise, and then do it all again. And our pointer should be about right on 110 degrees. So what this allows us to do is find the exact point we need to drill a new locating pin for this pulley. So we've just moved the this cam one tooth on the timing belt, set the rig up again, a bit janky, but it works. And now we're gonna check to see if we are at 110 like we hope to be. Hopefully. I'm confident, I think. So we back off to the tip again. That's when it stops moving. Yep, there you go. Happy with that. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, that face on is about 111 degrees that makes us one degree more retard than we were hoping for and if we wanted to add more or remove that degree we've got the adjustment in the cam wheel we can do all of that because we should be central on here zeroed on the wheel the next step is probably the hard part here and that's where we've got to re-drill our hole for the nub on the cam that way we can keep this wheel at the top like it's supposed to be, make easy timing changes and these, more importantly, these timing marks will be correct for the cam sensor. Everything that we found the TDC of this cam, but we just spoke to Emmy to make sure that these timing nubs for the cam didn't matter uh, in relation to the crank specifically. And um, what we found out from them was if you're running a 36-2 trigger wheel, it only uses these cam timing marks as a reference position to figure out what phase it's in. It doesn't use it to know exactly what crank degree it is. You know, for us, that means we could literally leave it like this, not re-drill it, not reorientate it at all, and it should work. Um, if you had a four tooth trigger wheel, that is not true. In which case, you would have to re-drill it. We're using a 36.2, so we're gonna test Emmy's claim on that one. We're gonna find out what happens. We believe it will work, they told us so, so we'll give it a go. Just marked our pulley, so we can uh, time it when we need to time it in the future. And uh, then we're gonna leave it like it is and pass you over to Lee, who's gonna teach you all about why we went this route and uh, 
how cams and cam timing interacts with turbos and such. So over to you, Lee. So because Dan is using a NB 1.6 head, we have the opportunity to do an exhaust intake swap or an X intake swap. The reason that we can't do that on an NA 1.6 head is because the NA intake cam needs to drive the cam angle sensor. Because we're using a NB 1.6 head, we have the cam angle sensor on the front of the cam and a crank angle sensor at the bottom of the engine. Because we're using a set of NA 1.6 cams and a set of NB 1.6 cams, we're able to mix and match those to get the best out of all the cams we have available to us. So the specs of the cams are, the NA intake cam has 237 degrees of duration and 7.9 degrees of lift, compared to the NB intake cam, which has 226 degrees of duration and 7.5 mm of lift. The NA exhaust cam has 248 degrees of duration and 7.9 degrees of lift, and the NB exhaust cam has 242 degrees of duration and 8.3 mm of lift. So the NB exhaust cam is slightly bigger than the NA exhaust cam, but the NA intake cam is slightly bigger than the NB intake cam. Now, we're not going to be using either of these intake cams because both intake cams are smaller than both of the exhaust cams. So that's why the exhaust intake mod is very interesting to us. Now, we're going to be taking that bigger NB exhaust cam and putting it into the intake cam because we don't have that cam angle sensor. So we will be, we will be increasing our cam from 237 degrees of duration and 27.9 millimeters of lift to 242 degrees of duration and 8.3 millimeters of lift. So we've gained 0.4 of a mil of lift in for the, in the uh, intake, and we've also gained five degrees of duration. Now for a turbo application, we want a bigger intake cam than what we do in exhaust cam. And by having adjustable cam pulleys on the front of the end, on the front of the cams, we are able to time those cams how we would like. So we've looked at some turbo cams that are available. And for example, our, NA exhaust cam has a center line, so the, high, the largest amount of lift on that cam occurs at 114 degrees before top dead center. A turbo cam has a center line of 120 degrees before top dead center. So using this adjustable cam gear, we're going to be able to add probably six degrees of advance to this cam to get the best results as a guideline. So the center line on the intake cams on an NA is 108 degrees, where the center line on the NB intake cams is 110 degrees. Now, what we've done is we have set this cam up to as near as we could get it with the standard position. It's actually turned out 111 degrees center line for the exhaust cam now in the intake side. However, a turbo cam has a center line of 110 degrees as well. So actually, we're in a pretty good position with these cams. We could use these cam pulleys to dial out that one degree. However, if we retard that cam more, that will move the power band further up. So what we will do is that on the dyno, we will need to make a compromise of do we want lots and lots of low end power, which would be great for driving on the street. So if we were to do that, we could advance the cam to move the power band down. Or if we want to move the power band up, we can retard that cam. We will almost certainly be just advancing the exhaust cam. So when we advance the exhaust cam, it will be opening earlier, which it has a function of reducing the amount of overlap, reducing scavenging, uh, reducing the, the opportunity for boost to leak out when we want to actually be sealing it into that cylinder. Hopefully that's provided you guys with some useful information of why we have chosen to put these cams in and also why we're able to do it on a 1.6, where most of the time people do it on a 1.8, especially for a turbo motor. Uh, I think that the combination of cams that we've got available to us has been actually surprisingly really interesting and I can't wait to get it on the dyno and find out exactly how much power this combination does make. Having those adjustable cam bullies will mean that we can tune it exactly how Dan wants, whether he wants lots of power down low, lots of power at the top. So thanks very much for watching this video. We've wanted to do it for a little while. Uh, 
As always, don't forget to like this video if you've learned something, subscribe to the channel for more Mazda MX-5 content every single week. Hit that bell icon so you get notified every time that we release a video and visit our shop for all sorts of cool stuff for your MX-5. See you next time. Hit that fucking bell, ding, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>